Welcome to Jake's Liquor Videos. Today we have a guest with us who's, who's going to be showing us how to taste wine. But first I'll let him introduce himself. Hello there. How are you? Uh, I'm glad to be here you know, with Roop at, at Jake's Liquor. And uh, my name is Shell. Well, actually, my name is Lars Shelby, a.k.a. Shell. Uh, I'm a local guy. I live here in Sheboygan County. And my business is wine and introducing people to Sheboygan County. So I do uh, like uh, wine education, uh, cooking demonstrations. You know, I'm a retired chef. You know, and uh, Rupert and I met uh, actually in the wine business. You know, I had owned a store, a part owner store in Sheboygan Falls for six years, you know, and um, sending customers to him for things that I didn't care, you know, and over the years we built a good relationship. What's up, Rupert? How you doing? Good, good, excellent. Oh, excellent. Well, beautiful, beautiful. Well, I'm glad you're here to taste with us, or actually show us how to taste. Okay. And then uh, that will get you started in the videos we're, we're showing here, and I hope you do subscribe to our channel here for Jake's uh, Liquor and then we'll be making a lot of these videos to educate you further in uh, the products we carry in the store. Um, we will be doing wine tastings, liquor, beer, I mean pretty much everything we have in the store. So, um, Shel, um, let's see, uh, what, what do you look for when uh, you taste wine or what do you look in a wine or I mean well, just uh, guide us through for your initial tasting of, okay. uh, of wine. Okay and, uh, well for me you know it's a uh, simple red or white <laughs> we gotta start there you know exactly. you red or white white wine are you are you a red wine drinker or white wine drinker? I actually drink both you know you drink I both? Tend, yeah okay. I tend to drink uh, maybe more red okay. than white but I enjoy both of them. Actually. Sweet or dry? Yeah. I like they're mostly dry, okay. but then there's a time and place for a sweet for me as well. Let's yeah, see if I can do this so. left-handed, you know? I mean, when I was cooking, I had to go left and right, so we can see if I can do this left-handed. Sure, so we're going to sure. taste the red wine today. Oh, you sure. can leave it sitting right there. Sure. We'll taste the red wine today, going with the left hand. Since we're not reviewing, we're just Excellent. going through a you process. Pour that oh, sure, go right here. Look at there. Something. Look at that. Check that out. Sure. <laughs> Normally, I have to What's pour that? for myself. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right. Beautiful. So, what are we looking for now, as far Where's as the uh, coaster? Listen. We got a coaster here. Uh, oh, sure. take mine. Yeah. All right. So, when tasting wine here, I, mean, I go through these processes. You know, some of the processes people would be familiar with, and some of them you won't be familiar with because I kind of, you know, ad lib and do my own thing. You know, so first you have that step, you know, in looking at the wine. You know, we'll look for the wine's clarity, see if there's any faults in the wine. I mean, some wines, you know, Rube, uh, you look inside the glass and you'll see floaty things in it. It could be a cork or maybe a little cloud in there, you know. Which, Is that extra bonus? Well, <laughs> cork, cork, cork wouldn't be a bonus. Okay, you know, cork sure. wouldn't be a bonus. And if you've got, you got a little cloud in there, uh, mm -hmm. that's not a good thing either. You know, it could be a form of bacteria floating uh, on top of that sure. wine. Before you move on, I, you know, uh, we talk about this all the time, and then when when you go to a restaurant and some, uh, the Somalia brings you the cork, uh, what what is the significance of that? And what do you, uh, I mean? Just just to talk about it, just uh, lightly. I mean, we have this cork. We pulled out of this uh, uh, wine here, okay. so. I mean, what are we looking for in it? Well, that's a good point. Then we're going to do this whole wine tasting from Some, the perspective just a basic, yeah, of I mean, being yeah, in the yeah. restaurant. Exactly. You know? Yeah. So I mean. Uh, yeah, it could be a restaurant or, okay. you know, or they could open that in a bottle of wine in their house and uh, what are they expecting out of the cork? Okay. Or, uh, what? So, Rup was my wine director today and he poured me some wine, you know, so he, he presented me with the cork. You know, so I'm looking at the cork here and you know, I can see that it has a nice little red dye on it, you know, so it's a red wine, uh, that it was laying on its side. If the wine bottle was upright, then you probably wouldn't get any dye on that cork. So I know the wine was laying down. You know, oftentimes you'll find these little crystals that would be uh, on the cork. You know, it's just tartaric acid. You know, no big deal, not a fault. But you're really looking for, you know, in the restaurant or the, in the books, they'll say, you know, you look at the cork and you smell the cork. You know, what are you smelling for? What are you smelling to see if there's funk on the cork? You know, because yeah. yeah, if there's funk on the cork, then it may be funk in the bottle. It sounds like a song. Okay. Ain't we funky, man. Like, <laughs> sure, sure. There you go. But a... you're looking for, you know, d uh, little details to show you that whether or not this is a good wine or a bad wine. Okay. Outside of that, okay. the cork 
is kind of insignificant. Okay. Because if it's a screw cap, then the, all bets are yeah. off. <laughs> yeah. A lot of wines are moving towards yes. the... Yes. Excellent. So that's Excellent. the cork part. Already sounds good. I'll let you carry on. All right. So then we, we looked at the wine, you know, we observed. I mean, uh, something I picked up over the years is that, you know, you smell that cork and if it has a little funk to it, it's going to have a little different nose to it, but that's gonna, it's not going to be bad. But you won't know if that wine is good or not until it gets in a bottle. In this case, air is your friend. Okay. Excellent. Going through the winemaking process, air is not your friend. But once you open that bottle, air is your friend because it's been stuck in that bottle for several months, maybe in a few years. So we looked at the wine, we make sure there's no floaties inside the wine, and then we got that swirling part. Here's the part, you know, where the wine people have fun at some of my classes. You know, swirling clockwise or counterclockwise. Two step. Either hold it by the base of the glass on the table, give it a swirl. But if you're good enough to do it in your hand. There you go, clockwise, kind of clockwise. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing here is incorporating air into the wine. All right, we want air into the wine because we want to release all the, uh, one of my customers said, releasing its aromatic esters. That goes out to you, you know who you are. <laughs> so that's pretty good there. I like that, releasing its aromatic esters. So now we're going through that process, adding air into the wine, and then we're gonna give it a smell. Now I do a two-step process smell route when mm -hmm. I'm smelling wine. You know, and the first step is to give me that introduction. Right? Because maybe, oh, FYI, when you're tasting wine or go to a wine tasting, no perfume. Okay. Yeah. No gum. Yeah. Don't even mouthwash your, your, your mouth or, or rinse your mouth when you come with Listerine okay. or something. That's going to just ruin your whole experience. It's going to interfere yes. with uh, the strong you, bubble gums yeah, exactly, and all. Exactly, exactly. Okay. But if you do that, you know, hopefully where you're attending this wine tasting or even at home, eat some cheeses, some crackers or something just to cleanse that palate, all right? So now, we're, my two-step process in smelling is that introductory. So stick your nose in. Most people don't stick their nose in the wine glass. Stick your nose in the wine glass. So now, what, are, what nice are we looking for? Now we're here, we're trying to get an introduction. What does the wine smell like? We want to, first of all, want to say, does it smell good? Does it smell like fruit? Or does it smell off? We're looking for off smells. But that process is real slow. A nice, slow inhale, count about three, five seconds. Take it away. Mm. Okay. Now, everything's already registered in the mind. We don't care what it is. is. Is it grape? Is it plum? Is it cherry? That's not important right it's now. It's making me thirsty. Exactly. Sure, yeah. Thirst is a good thing. Salud. <laughs> so now, we, the second step, we go through and we smell. That's when we start identifying what we smell. And I like to say, people, just shout it out. I'll tell mm -hmm. you this. In wine tasting, it's all subjective. There's no right, there's no wrong. So here we go. Excellent. You've heard oh. it. You've heard it. Oh. There's no right and wrong. No so. right and wrong. Exactly. I mean, I, I get a little plum on this, a little cedar. Yeah, oh. there's, there's a lot of dark berries yes. I, I smell in here. Oh, this is wonderful. Like, you know, back like, in my earlier years, I was once able to go through this process. I can tell you what the grape is in these wines. We'll, we'll see if I can even figure that one out today. <laughs> sure. So the more... The more you taste wines, and then you can you can identify with some of the flavors that are that are out there. Yes, I mean each now, grape has a profile. Yeah, you know it has a characteristic profile. You know, so it gives you a chance to identify. Yeah. Now, when we talk about different tastes and berries and all, that doesn't mean the berries are in the in that wine. It's just that grapes that are grown they have a certain character, and then exactly. that's what that's what we're looking for. And a lot exactly. of wines would have. Uh, not only fruits and they will have different characters from the surroundings yep. from the soil and from the soil or the trees that are growing around uh, the, yep. the, yeast, some, the yeast strain that was used some. the type of barrel it was aged in all of these things impart characteristic flavors and aromas Excellent. so now the next step we're going to do is going to be the taste phase again another two-step process here we're getting because, there. That's right. We're going to taste it a minute yeah, here. Sure. So this show just talk, talk, talk. <laughs> but, so my first step in tasting, you take a little bit of wine into your palate and you rinse. Okay? Don't even worry about what you taste. Count about five, eight seconds and it's a palate rinse. Mm-hmm. That's delicious. At this phase, you have to spit the wine out. As you notice here, we have no buckets because in our town, we're drinking it. We're out. drinking it. <laughs> <laughs> so now that second step, now you register it, it's the introduction. 
Okay. okay. The wine that says, hello, how are you? Mm -hmm. I'm uh -huh. wine. I'm red or I'm white. There you go. I like. So now that next step, the next step when you taste the wine, that's when you begin to register and evaluate. I mean, simply put, is it a good wine? And how does it taste? Yep. What does it taste like? Okay. And most importantly, whether or not you like it for the taste. Now, a lot of people will see when they taste wine, they swirl that. It seems kind of, um, to the novice, it seems like kind of what they're doing. So, can you explain what that does as far as taking the wine in and swirling it in your mouth? In your mouth? Well, again, as I mentioned earlier, air is your friend. So, even in that process, when you take it in your mouth, you're incorporating air. But what is actually happening, what you're doing, is you're making sure that, that those wine, the wine gets in, throughout your entire mouth. I mean, you want to get it up inside your gums. I mean, there's taste sensations mm -hmm. throughout your entire mouth, outside of your palate. You want to make sure that wine gets up. Because there's some key components that you're tasting for with this wine. Oh, and those wow. components are going to be four major ones, five. You know, water is a, is a natural component, you know, in the great process. But you have acid, you have tannins, you have sweetness or sugar and you have alcohol the objective and everyone's palate here's where it becomes subjective everyone's palate tongue is going to be different the objective is to make sure to find out if that's balanced you're looking for harmony with all those different components in the wine that one doesn't spike above the other when i tasted this wine i do it again real quick here i just want another drink so <laughs> i just noticed when I swirl, it just intensifies the whole flavors like double. Mm -hmm. It just puts a, so much pack to the to the flavors that it just hitting every little taste bud in the mouth. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's excellent. So when that's I that. taste this wine, for me, there's a nice balance that exists there. There's a coexisting relationship with all of the components. My mouth is watery. That's the acidity, which is most mm -hmm. important. You have the tannins that there. It gives the wine some structure. You know, it's robust. This is a, is a red wine. You yeah. know, nice yeah. structure to it. Yeah. Uh, there's a, a ripe fruit characteristic to it. Not no. sweet, yeah. but a ripe fruit characteristic to it. Yeah. And alcohol, some of it goes unnoticed. Now, some people have a sensitivity yes, to alcohol. Yeah. You know, but it's what I mean when I talk about a wine just being in balance. So now, Rube, we have one more step. This is the last step, you know, and that's the finish. You know, meaning the lasting impression of the wine. You know, uh, and you, you evaluate, this is where the true evaluation comes into the wine. It's whether or not you like it. Simply, simply put, yes, I like it, no, I don't. Uh, how long does the wine's character last or its taste last, you know, on your palate? You know, so if it's like zero to 30 seconds, short. Uh, 30 seconds to, let's say, 45 or a minute, medium. Longer than a minute long finish. For myself, uh, I think this wine has a, a, a nice, pleasantly long finish. I can still taste it. How about you, Rube? Well, this particular wine, I mean, we're not doing wine tasting today to this uh, Pacific wine here, um, but this is a Melbeck um, uh, from uh, Argentina. It's got some full bodiness, and I feel the tannins are Right, nicely strong, so it has a pretty long finish, I think. Uh, what do you think? Well, there is you that? have it, long finish. <laughs> we, we agree. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, hey Ruth, that? one more thing. Mm. You know, I, I'm just digging it here, man. Can I can I be your, your guest co-host every so often on your show, man? Oh, sure. Oh, well, well, if we're drinking. <laughs> and, before, and before we go, uh, I want to ask you about your website and what oh, okay. do you do. Okay, well, well, thanks for the plug. Mm -hmm. So, if you want to be in contact with me, Shell, or Lars Shell, be aka Shell, you can visit www.vinodiscoveries.com or www.discoversheboygan.com. Check me out on Facebook, which is discoversheboygancounty.com. Thank you very much. So, and we'll put the links below for you as well. And when Jake's Liquor has its own Facebook page, so don't forget to check that out. And do subscribe to our channel, and we'll be putting out a lot of these videos for you. And once again, salute. Salute. Thanks, Ru. Hmm. 
That's good. Mm -hmm.